What does a developer do day to day? Well, one thing that I had to learn when I first started learning to code and that I still have to do today is creating user stories. What are user stories? Well, stay tuned to find out. Before we get started, I want you to be a part of my tribe. So go ahead and click that subscribe button. And if you're really enjoying my content, click the bell so you can find out when new videos are released. So in a previous video, I said that I was gonna discuss Kanban boards coming up soon. But I thought before we did that, it was imperative that we discuss user stories because user stories are what's gonna make up that Kanban board. Now, a user story is a high level definition of a requirement for your application that gives just enough information so a developer can give an estimation of how long it's gonna to take to complete that task. Simply put, a user story describes how a customer or user is going to use your application. So in my experience, an ITPM, AKA a project manager, will go out and interview a customer, observe their environment, and see what types of problems they're facing. And then based off that research, they create a user story. So when I was first learning how to code, I had to play every single role there was in uh, developing a project. So that included being a project manager. That means I had to create uh, user stories on my own. Now this helped me learn about agile method methodology and it helped me to understand how important it was to make user stories in organizing a project and visualizing the workflow of a user. So I encourage you to make user stories for all the projects that you have now that you're creating on your own before you get a new job or as you're transitioning into an agile a team. So the syntax is simple. It goes as a blank, which is a role. I want to blank, which says what. And then so that I can why. Why do you want to do the what? So let's say that we're building an application for dogs to meet other dogs in their city. Let's call it Sniffs and Wolfs. Now, this is kind of like Meetup, but for pet owners and dogs. So from a user's perspective or customer, AKA a pet owner, I might want um, for, that, for my pet to have a profile page. And this is a requirement. So my user story might go something like, as a pet owner, that's the role, I want my pet to have a profile page, that's the what, so that other pet owners can see my pet before the initial meetup. That's the why. Or a good one might be that as a pet owner, I want my dog to have a, a profile page so that I can share stories with other pet owners. So what do you think about creating a user story so far? Does it sound easy? Do you think you can put it into your next project? Tell me a little bit more about how you're gonna employ this in the comments below. Now, I wanna go a little bit deeper into why it's so important to create user stories. So if you know who your target audience is, you know exactly who you're building this application for, this is your opportunity to have a conversation with them, to figure out what they like, what their problems are, and to build that application so that they'll enjoy using it and that it solves their problem. Now, if you don't know who your audience is, this is the opportunity to figure it out. This is the opportunity to create those um, audiences and to understand who they are and gear your application towards them instead of trying to please everybody because FYI, you can't. Also, that last part of your user story that says, so that, that is something that should be testable. You want to have test subjects later on and you want to have somewhere to push them. So say the so that says, so that I can create stories and share stories with other pet owners. Now, when I'm going through that as a developer or as a user who's about to use this application, I should be able to see somewhere that I can create those stories and be able to share it with other users. It's always good to test your applications. So I also want to discuss two terms that you might come in contact with as you're diving more deep into creating user stories of your own. And those terms are epics and personas. Now, epics are kind of like user stories, but they're way bigger and you really can't complete them in the two weeks that you're usually allotted to uh, finish a user story. 
So an epic allows you to get an overview of a feature without committing to any details. They're really big and they're usually broken down into user stories. So say for instance, this was a book. The epic might be the title of the book. It's an overview. It gives you an idea of what the book is about and it doesn't really give you too many details. Whereas a user story would be the chapters or even smaller, they might be the sections in those chapters. So an example of an epic might be to allow a customer to manage his or her account for their pet. Now, as you can see, this epic doesn't say what type of user it is. It doesn't even tell you how they're gonna manage the account. It's just a broad overview of the feature and it's going to be broken down into various user stories. So just know what an epic is. So the second term was personas. A lot of teams like to create personas instead of roles when they're creating user stories. And personas are fictional characters that you create based off what you've learned about the people who are gonna be using your application. And those personas contain a name, a picture, a relevant characteristics and attitudes, and they have a goal that should be solved by using your product. So an example of a persona would be Natalie. She's 26, she's an elementary school teacher, and she loves to run marathons. She loves pit bulls, but she knows that they have a bad rep. So she would love to help others fall in love with pit bulls by giving them good experiences through her own pit bull pets. So that last part about Natalie wanting to help people fall in love with her pets through good experiences, that was a goal. And that goal should help you create epics, which should help you create user stories. And that epic should highlight the functionality of your application. So now if you look back at all the work we've done for this fictitious application called Sniffs and Wolves, you should be able to have a great workflow to get you started on creating this app. So let's go through them. The persona, Natalie is 26. She's an elementary school teacher and a marathon runner. She loves pit bulls, but knows they have a bad rep. She would love to help others fall in love with pit bulls by having good experiences with her pets. The epic, to allow the customer to manage his own account for their pet. And finally, the user story. As a pet owner, I want to have a profile for my pet so that I can share stories before the get together. Or with a persona, Natalie, a pet owner, wants to have a profile for her pet so that she can share stories with other users and they can fall in love with that pet before the play date. So at this point, you should be able to create your own personas, epics, and user stories for your own application. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe below. Also, I would love to see you on Instagram and Twitter. So join me by taking a picture of your user stories and at me or hashtag it coding like a boss. See you later.